All right, let's take a look now at some of the parades that we talked about. This one, the one we're looking at here, is a relatively early suffrage parade, still with carriages uh, and with banners that refer to the children. What can you tell us about this one? Right, mothers, children, um, pure food. You can tell partly because this is not a regimented march, the way some of the later um, parades are. You can tell that it's early for that reason. They're kind of scattered and they're still making the connection which never quite died, um, but was very strong at the beginning of the 20th century, that women deserve the right to vote because they were in charge of the family welfare. And so all the legislation that they were aiming for and which came to pass about pure food, um, custody of children, child welfare, all the child. They played the um, mother role up as being part of why they deserve to be full citizens. And yet in the following photograph, let's, let's look at this one uh, and then perhaps we can look at them side by side. Uh, this one looks like a much more regimented parade and people right. seem to be dressed uniformly and yes so here is the equestrian brigade at the front of the parade became more and more common there's one woman on a white horse behind them are you see the women wearing pennants as we talked about earlier they're pinned on their clothes um, you can't see the rest of the marchers but they're obviously marching in uh, uniform ranks. One of the things that Harriet Stanton Blatch did was rehearse the marchers for these parades. Mm. And they would rehearse in New York um, in Bryant Park, right behind what is now the New York Public Library. And she taught the marchers not just to stand straight. Eyes ahead was really important because they were heckled. We haven't mm. talked about that. All these things look like extravaganzas with a sense of good feeling about them. But in fact, all the moments when suffragists moved into public, into the public view, they were not always met with applause. They were often harassed. And so along the sides of the parades are people who are either hissing them or when they're on street corners, they're getting things thrown at them. And one of the important things about marching in a parade on Fifth Avenue, which this is, is eyes ahead. In other mm -hmm. words, to learn to not react to the distractions on the side and to keep uniform ranks as a way of displaying the visual language of these parades is that women have discipline. That's fascinating. And we notice that most of the observers seem to be men if we're to judge by their hats. Yes. And of course, since they're appealing to men in the end to vote for suffrage, they would have to be disciplined in the face of the male heckling. Um, there were several years where the Men's League for Women's Suffrage, mm. which had been organized by John Dewey and Max Eastman, um, marched in the parade and they got the greatest number of catcalls because of course they were being gender traitors, we could say, but they were entirely harassed. And they would be marching, of course, since this is a woman's parade, they would be marching toward the back behind these marchers. I love it. 